welcome everybody today we are starting a new session on pmp exam prep this is our traditional live online training which we conduct late night from pakistan time it is 11 pm here and will continue till 1 am probably this is a good time for middle east and therefore uh, most of the people were attending right now are from middle east so we have got atif amin from dubai we have got shahid from jeddah adris from qatar and wasif probably uh, we could not listen to him before he is probably from lahore or somewhere and we have got uh, two other people which who are likely to join uh, mohammed ali and Rijo Ibrahim. On top of uh, these six people, we have many other people who have shown interest and I was expecting that they might join. But so far, they have not been able to log into this go to training access. Anyways, so today uh, I'm going to introduce you to this training. This uh, training I have named it a manager's guide to project management <clears throat> and it is based on a guide to project management body of knowledge which is fifth edition. As you all might know that PMI has already released last month the new edition the sixth edition of PMBOK and all future testing after 26th of March 2018 would be based on sixth edition but till that time uh, testing would be based on fifth edition why are we conducting this course right now because this is the right time to go for the certification do not wait for 26th of March to happen do not try to book your exam at the very last moment because you would know you would learn ultimately that later you try to appear in this exam to the date the exam is changing lesser are the chances for you to pass this certification exam why I'm saying that is because <coughs> this certification exam is percentile based there is no pass percentage for this exam, at least none which we know of. It is percentile based and even that percentile is not made public by PMI. So whatever they decide to keep as a percentile for passing the people, say they have, they have selected 90% to be the lowest mark anyone who would be you know uh, sorry not 90 percent 90 percent comes later say they have chosen to pick 100 top candidates so whomsoever secure the top 100 marks would be selected no matter if the hundred person has got hardly 50 percent or that 100 person has got 99 percent no matter what that would stand as the percentile so percentile is likely to change it all depends upon the competitiveness of the people appearing in the exam uh, in these last three months of the exam change after say 26th of december to 26th of march 2018 there will be a lot of competition because everybody from all around the world would be applying for the exam and would be trying to sit the exam and therefore there is a, a, a likelihood that the pass percentile will go very high right now if you appear and that's what i'm trying to give you a date 15th of december from my point of view is a very safe date 
if you can take give or take one week that is good enough at most you, you can go up to 26th of december later than that would be treading the dangerous grounds and therefore uh, many people who are appearing right now most of them which i know of they all have passed but i am sure after january onwards it the percent past percentage will not be exactly like like that so this is just a warning before we start and naturally i'll talk more about all these things as far as myself i am concerned i am your trainer and my name is sohail ikbal i am training pmp candidates since 2001 and that is the time when i qualified my pmp certification and since then i have the honor to be the first and only person in pakistan to hold all the eight certifications of pmi i am also a prince 2 practitioner and hold all the scrum certifications and in good times back in 1990 i used to have all the microsoft certifications as well i am only up keeping microsoft certified trainer certification so far anyways this is what uh, uh, my certification background is i am a civil engineer uh, rather i would say not really a practicing one i have changed my profession a number of times uh, so by by education i am a civil engineer i have been practicing software engineering most of the time uh, i am also a masters in computer science masters in english literature i have got two two mbas i have got masters in leadership and mphil in computer science i also have done my phd work with schema business school france and uh, i am a research scholar with them though that is uh, a long time i have not gotten connected with them i do not hold a phd right now but yes i have completed the coursework there so uh, as i said i have been training pmp uh, candidates since 2001 i have also conducted a number of courses of pro on program management portfolio management risk management scheduling agile certification also on scrum i have uh, a number of courses conducted and there are a lot many people in pakistan and around the globe who have qualified various certifications after studying from me and i hope and wish that each one of you will be able to make it at least the for the very first step the pmp and then naturally i would wish to see all of you to progress further into that path basically pmb okay this is a guide to the project management body of knowledge as we have already said we are following the fifth edition of pmb okay which is soon to be obsolete but there is no problem uh, many people ask me why should they not be appearing in the sixth edition uh, that is good okay if you want to appear on sixth edition there is no problem but the only problem here is that fifth edition examination is mature the preparation for fifth edition is easy to do because a lot of training material is available lot many trainers right now in the market are conducting these trainings there are a lot many books and questions trial questions available on websites so this is easier to do if you try to do sixth edition first of all you have to wait till 26th of march then there would be no trainer in the market who would be competent enough to teach pmb okay sixth edition naturally they will be teaching for the first time they will be committing mistakes they will be conceptual problems and it is not only with the trainers that these conceptual problems will be there it will also be with the testing pmi exam will be 
you know, not bug free in the beginning. So give or take three to six months after 26th of March, uh, that would not be a very safe time to appear on sixth edition even because the exam will also start to get mature. And ultimately, after three to six months, you will have a well-formed, a mature examination. So if you are not appearing on fifth edition, then you should not appear in sixth edition at least till September of 2018. Just wait for it. Relax. Don't go for the exam. But if at all you intend passing your exam on fifth edition, from my side, the deadline is 15th of December. And if you delay it, you are going to be responsible yourself because the exam will start becoming more difficult to pass after that. So if maximum you can go later, don't go beyond 26th of December 2017. That is my suggestion. So we will be following the fifth edition. As far as the fifth edition is concerned, basically there are three core standards of PMI. The a guide to project management body of knowledge, which is in the fifth edition, is the is the basis for this core. And on top of that, they had also created two other standards in hierarchy program management the standard for program management which is currently being tested for third edition standard for portfolio management again currently being tested for third edition both of these standards have also been updated the fourth edition of both of these standards have been released and their testing will be starting with a gap of three months after PMBOK. After three months after PMBOK, that is June 2018, program management testing will start. September 2018, portfolio management testing will also change to the fourth edition. Anyways, I am currently referring to the three core standards project for project, program and portfolio management. And these are these are to be studied together to form a complete understanding of organizational project management. All of these three disciplines put together are called organizational project management. Actually, uh, these are the three core standards. But if you look at the foundational standards, uh, that would include one other standard rather I would not like to call it a standard as such because that is more of a maturity model that is called organizational project management maturity model they call it knowledge foundation not a standard knowledge foundation so on top of these three core standards there is a knowledge foundation for the maturity model I said project program and portfolio put together is called organizational project management and organizational project management is tested for the maturity of an organization in projects programs and portfolios so this maturity model this knowledge foundation opm3 we call it in short is basically to test your organization, assess your organization, and to improve the maturity of your organization in the matters of organizational project management. As we proceed ahead, you would learn more about OPM3, organizational project management, projects, programs, and portfolios, and several other concepts. PMI has also a lot of other standards to go beside these foundational standards actually what they have done is they have found several areas in which further standardization was required or further detail 
was to be explored and exploited. So they kept forming practice standards for those areas. And some of these practice standards have also come up ultimately as separate certifications. Like you see, practice standard for scheduling, that is a specializ specialization in the area of scheduling and time management. This standard is in addition to PMBOK, although you do not need to study it, but if at all you are interested to improve your knowledge in this area, you must. And moreover, this also supports the PMI certification on scheduling professional. Again, for Adris, being a civil engineer, probably you would understand the importance of this standard. Moreover, not only for civil engineers, but for all, all of you, you may require at some stage to act as a scheduling expert. So for that matter, you may like to go for PMI SP certification, which is scheduling professional. Just remember, <clears throat> this certification is just not a certification on this standard. It is not a scheduling certification alone. This is a PMP plus kind of a certification where you need to have all the knowledge a PMP needs to have plus specialized knowledge in scheduling. Only then you will be able to clear the PMI SP exam. Similarly, on the extreme right corner, you can see the practice standard for project risk management. Similar to standard for scheduling, this also represents a certification which is called PRM. PMI PRM, that is professional risk manager. So you can become a professional risk manager, an expert in risk management. This certification also is a PMP plus. You need to have all the knowledge of PMP as well as expert knowledge on risk management to pass this exam. Not all practice standards are associated with a separate certification. Like you see, we have a practice standard for project estimating, which encompasses all kinds of estimating in a project environment and that would include cost time and resources all three kinds of estimations they are included in this practice standard this is a good read if you want to be an estimator especially again i would be referring to adris being a civil engineer civil engineers are very fond of estimation i understand adris appointment is as a planner Engineering, engineering planner. So, in planning, you must be have, having some estimators, some surveyors, some schedulers, and sometimes in some organizations, they have the risk managers. Yet another practice standard is earned value management. And earned value management is a very interesting standard. We will study all these things in PMBOK, but not to the level of detail they are available in these st practice standards because these practice standards are marvelous. They have ample data. They have ample information uh, and uh, they leave no stone unturned. But I will explain why a standard is difficult to understand. I'll come to that later. But first, let me introduce all these different standards. Earned value management is a modern way of comparing, measuring and comparing your progress vis-a-vis -vis your expenditure, your cost management. This is normally a problem that when a project is running, we are running after the schedule, controlling the schedule, but we at that stage, we forget about managing the cost while when the project is about to start we are more concerned about the budgeting and we are not 
much concerned about the schedule. So, to give equal importance to time and schedule, earned value is a mechanism which measures the progress and performance of the project while these two things are kept a check on. Then in the lower, lower field, we have got on the extreme left, practice standard for project configuration management, another interesting concept and an interesting standard. And this standard talks about how various versions of various changes and documents to be managed and maintained for a project. It is not only the documents, it could be the product, it could be anything. If it is changing its shape, if it is changing from one version to other, all the record is to be kept under configuration management. So we do talk a little about configuration management in PMBOK, but this is an extensive detail in this book, Practice Standard for Project Configuration Management. And if at all you are ever interested, you must, you must read it. Then we have got a practice standard for work breakdown structure. This is probably the most important in the series so far uh, in practice standards because how to break your work down into various work packages and activities that is very deliberately explained in this standard. Again, although we will talk about it in PMBOK, we will teach you how to do the work breakdown structure. But if you want to learn more intricate things about work breakdown structure, that would be covered in this standard. Again, this is not required to be read for the preparation of PMBOK, for PMP exam. But still, if you like, you can. So there are some other uh, practice standards also in addition to these. So this is one way PMI expands its standards in shape of practice standards. There is yet another way and that is, as you understand, PMI has created a global standard which is common for all. So it applies to a civil engineer, it applies to a to, to, to an IT expert, it applies to an NGO, it applies to government everywhere, anywhere in, in the world, all the countries, all the cultures, they can follow the standard. But if a construction engineer wants to use it, they can, but they probably will need certain additions to the standard which they apply only in the area of construction. So far construction, they have come up with an extension to, uh, uh, to PMBOK. That means all the knowledge given in PMBOK applies to construction, but the additional knowledge which a construction engineer or construction manager needs to know to maintain or to manage a construction project they must refer to this construction extension to the PMBOK guide. Similarly, for the government projects, they have got a government extension. For defense projects, they have got a defense extension. For software projects, they have got a software extension. And as the time passes, they keep coming up with new practice standards and new extensions to PMBOK. So there are a number of extensions so far I know of four such extensions in existence. Then we have got uh, yet another interesting framework which is called project management project manager competency development framework. No matter if you are a PMP or not. But if you are a project manager and you want to improve your competency as a project manager. This is a framework through which you can assess yourself as a person, as a project manager and see what you are lacking and ultimately try to improve yourself. You see, this, this is called PMCDF, Project Manager Competency Development Framework. This PMCDF 
is very much comparable to OPM3 you have seen in the previous slide. OPM3 was Organizational Project Management Maturity Model. Why is it comparable there? Because OPM3 was meant for assessing an organization. In organizational project management, meaning what? Project programs and portfolios, how well you perform them. So that assesses them from OPM point of view and maturity model grades the organization on a scale. And then it shows you as an organization your weaknesses and tells you how to improve it. Here in PPM CDF, a project manager can assess himself or the HR guy or the, or the senior person to the project manager who is writing his report can assess the competencies of the project manager and give him the improvements. What, what specific skills or competencies need to be improved. So that is one way of improving your competencies. Even if you become a BMP, still you might need this. So there are lot many other standards or lot many other publications from PMI and uh, they are, you know, always they are publishing new things. And trust me, this is just not a money making scheme. Some people say even P these certifications are very expensive. They are money making schemes. No, they are exactly very, very useful things. They actually build your knowledge. Basic purpose of PMI is to somehow create knowledge, knowledge base. So if you learn PMBOK, you have just taken the very first step. You can see so many other standards. You can always improve your competency, your knowledge and your experience. So you must not stop after PMP. Okay, so far, whatever I have talked about, let us first discuss it. I have some, some, someone wants to talk, so you can raise hand. Or for the, for the time being, I am opening up the mic of everyone. If you have any comments, you can speak. Yes, please. <clears throat> yes, anyone? Atif, anything to say? Ji Shahid? Adris? Vasif, I think nobody wants to talk. Okay, let me continue then. I'll move on to introduce you to two kinds of certifications. One is PMP and one is CAPM. Okay. Why am I talking about CAPM? PMP, as you know, is Project Management Professional Certification, whereas CAPM is Certified Associate in Project Management. Now, CAPM is a junior level certification. This is an associate level certification, whereas PMP is for full-fledged project managers. CAPM is a certification which could be gained by people who have a very little experience or for that matter no experience at all just simple college education and they can get into the CAPM certification they can pass it normally people getting out of universities they prefer to do CAPM because they land up better opportunities to get jobs based on their basic knowledge on project management the syllabus is same they have to understand and learn everything, but the requirement which is different is the PMP candidate needs to be experienced and <clears throat> the examination is more difficult. It is scenario based and 
PMP needs to show an experience of at least three years in the field as managing a project. So I, uh, I know, I understand that all of you who are listening to this, who are attending this course, you all are going for PMP and you all qualify for appearing into that. But I will come to that, how to apply and what to do and what are the criteria and requirements for appearing in the PMP exam. If at all, you does not you do not fulfill the requirements to be a PMP, then you can openly go for CAPM exam. But I'm, I'm sure that you all are capable of going for PMP. Okay, if you go to PMI website, that is PMI.org, PMI.org. <coughs> In under the certifications, you will see a number of certifications, actually eight different certifications. PMP is one of them. CAPM is another. You click on the desired certification and then you will be shown to a page where on the right hand side there would be three or four files which can, which are which can be downloaded. So please download the latest version of PMP handbook or CAPM handbook whichever you are interested in. If you go to CAPM certification then it will be CAPM handbook. If you go for PMP certification it will be PMP handbook. So download the PMP handbook and that will give you a detail about how to appear in the exam, what are the requirements and everything. Whatever I am going to be talking to you today is what you are going to get there. On top of that, at the end of this book, PMP handbook, there is a small little portion which covers the ethics and professional conduct for project managers. There are just few pages. You must read it because you will be tested in exam on those aspects as well. That is not there in PMB, okay? Ethics and professional conduct is not part of PMBOK 5th edition, but in 6th edition, the new edition, they have added some part of it. But anyways, that does not really matter for you. For you, what matters is that PMP handbook is to be understood, it should is to be read carefully, very carefully. But I am going to be your guide. I will get you through with this handbook and tell you how to do what. For CAPM, there is a CAPM handbook and naturally all the details about CAPM exam and application and everything would be provided in this handbook. As far as the growth of CA, uh, PMP is concerned, probably this is the old diagram. I have created a new one, but is not shown here right now. Uh, this is since the inception uh, of PMP rather not really since the inception of PMP from 1993 because PMP, PMI, PMP exam was first started somewhere between 1985 or something. Anyways, since 1993 till 2013 that comes out to be 20 years progress. In 20 years this is what we have seen. The growth from 1,000 certified professionals has now increased, not now, in June 2013, it was 552,977. Right now, it is almost around 800,000 people who are certified PMPs. You can see the growth. I had created, cleared my exam in 2000 and it was about 27 people. 27,000 people by at that time who were certified. Now we have got more than 800,000 people who are certified. You can see the difference. And day by day, this is becoming popular. This is why you should be going for this certification. This is one of the 
most fast growing certifications in the world and it is not easy i am not making you afraid of it but yes this is a really professional certification a really serious certification and not that easy okay how do they create a certification let us have a look at that if you look at the top whenever there is a need in the market when pmi feels that some new certification is to be coined there must be some market need so when people come to pmi and give them the problem that they need to have professionals in a specific area of project management and there should be a certification in that area pmi hires a third party to conduct the market research this is according to the international standards this survey is conducted globally and based on that that research that proves the business case for introducing a new certification it not only proves the feasibility of that certification but also identifies the knowledge skills and tasks related to that specific job like the project manager job the knowledge skills and tasks are not defined by the pmbok it is defined by the market the market tells how a project manager should look like feel like and know so all the capabilities all the competencies and experience whatever is required from a project manager that is result of a market research globally and that gives rise to a examination specification based on those knowledge skills competencies which have been gathered from the market and which is which has been found feasible pmi creates an exam specific examination specification what are the areas in which the people are to be tested to be seen if they really have the skills to be called a project manager they classify those tasks and then they define what that task that the project manager should be able to do in that task so this exam examination specification is the direct result of the market research and this is going to be the blueprint for the exam content actually the in third step step 3 when the exam development team comes into action there are several subject matter experts from around the globe voluntarily working for this job they would be given the examination specification and just looking at the specification they will be creating a number of objective type questions so the objective type questions are not restricted to be only from pmb okay they could be from anywhere therefore you should not only rely on pmb okay pmb okay is a good thing when it comes to developing concepts it is a standard so the project when should be done this way and you should understand all the concepts and naturally we will try to find the answer of every question from the you know eyes of pm bok but at the same time question could be coming from anywhere in the world so once the exam questions have been created for the first time when the certification is being initiated first they run a pilot of that certification exam that pilot would have different requirements like you know uh, sometimes they say the people appearing in pilot can appear free of cost sometimes they say you have to pay and then you will be reimbursed the whole amount or part of that amount whatever the conditions are for the first time when a new certification is introduced a pilot has to be run to see if the examination questions prepared are of the required difficulty level to check 
the examination specification is it according to the examination specification and is the difficulty level of the exam is proper it should not be very difficult it should not be very easy it should be mediocre so based on the results of this pilot exam then the pass criteria for the exam is established i have appeared in a number of pilots like you, you see in <clears throat> i did appear in a business analysis pilot i also appeared in portfolio management pilot so at that time when we appeared for the exam there was no pass criteria at all based on the result of our examination they created the pass criteria and now that pass criteria is actually in vogue so uh, these people who are uh, appearing in the pilot exam they are taking a big risk because they can also fail <clears throat> everyone who appears in the pilot exam does not pass fifth step is once the pilot is successful the credential is released the certification is released to the market like you know pmp is currently released and then they do the continuous credential care like you know exam development sessions keep occurring new ideas keep coming new comments and ultimately after every 3 to 4 years they are going to revise uh, the pmb okay and ultimately the exam would change due to that but whenever this market research is conducted again meaning what when market changes its need Five years ago, market was looking at a different kind of project manager. Today, market is looking at a different kind of project manager. Today, they are talking about agile project manager. So, the project manager today would not be the same as before because today's project manager will have to be skillful in the competencies which were not there before. Therefore, a fresh market research is conducted. then again the new exam specifications are created exams are developed credentials are not piloted this time this is only done for the first time the credential is released so there are two ways why a certification exam is changed number 1 the pmbok the core standard is updated new edition is released like we are now having the sixth edition so on 26th of march 2020 2018 uh, we are going to ha have this exam change due to the new addition of pmbo but there will be another instance after a couple of years maybe one or two years later the new market research may come up and again the exam will change but that time it would be due to the market need changing this time it is due to the pmbo okay so pmbok does matter i don't do not say that pmbok is not really required for passing the exam but i am saying pmbok is not the only reference to peer for the exam you have to study more you have to understand each and everything given in pmbok and prepare yourself according to the examination specifications not only according to pmbok now from where you have just downloaded the pmp handbook just below pmp handbook you will find the examination content outline which is the examination specification pmp examination content outline in short people call it eco eco you must download eco because eco specifically describes each and every task a project manager needs to know about and if you prepare according to the, that exam specification there is no way that you can fail so do not only study from pmb okay you keep the examination specification or eco in front of you prepared according to that and st uh, study the concepts from pmb okay and clarify these concept from various other sources by reading other books by getting this kind of training or by discussing it with other professionals so this is this is a tough deal but i can assure you i'll make it much much easier for you
Okay, the voice is back. The voice is back. Uh, so you can speak now if you if you like. Yes, please. Address up is your question. You have just told us about ECO means. Uh, how we can get this one from where actually i could not understand okay 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 the uh, issue as i as i told you that you have to go to pmi.org click on certifications click on pmp and once you are on the page for pmp on the right hand side there will be a number of files downloadable in pdf format the first file would be the pmp handbook the second file would be this ECO that is PMP examination content outline and there might be two other files one could be sample questions or something like that and you, you should download all of those files you will get the ECO from there did I answer your question thanks got it Okay, who else? Any other questions? Sir, there is a question. Like uh, you said that uh, risking failing a quality exam that if you appear now this time. What are the consequences of failing the exam? Uh, just a minute, Adris. Uh, I'll, I'll just... जी अदरी सभी बोलिएगा ओके अभी बोलिए अभी बोलिए सर कैन यू हियर मी जी अदरी साहब की आवाज आ रही है अदरी बोल रहे हैं आतिफ बोल रहे हैं आतिफ बोल रहा हूं आतिफ जी आतिफ बोलिए uh, so my question is, like you said that for uh, there is a risk of failing a quality exam that you were discussing in the previous slide. So uh, could you please tell me that what are the consequences if you fail in an exam? Like uh, uh, it uh, like uh, affects your credentials or what? No, 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 no problem at all. You see, I'll, I'll explain it in detail. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, you need to apply for the exam. Once you apply for the exam, it is a it is a complicated process by which they will select you for the exam. And if you are selected, then you have one complete year to appear in the exam. During this one year, you can apply up to three times to sit in the exam. Although you 
have to pay again for the second and third time but that would be, would be the less payment because you have already been processed to appear in the exam so it will be payment lesser than the total payment but you can appear three times and there is no effect on your credential except if you fail three times in one year then you are barred to sit in the pmp exam for one complete year after that so you have to wait for one year and then you can again apply again pay full fee again apply uh, for, for the exam and if your application is approved you will get another one complete year and three chances so did i make myself clear yes it's clear sir thank you very much okay so let me move on and let me tell you the procedure for applying for pmp certification okay let me first confirm if you can see the slide i'm seeing and then i'll move ahead let me check it okay can everyone see the the slide with the saying about pmp application submission on top yes we can see yes we can see okay wonderful wonderful okay this is the exam uh, this is actually given in the handbook pmp handbook and uh, if you are going for a capm then capm handbook will ha will have its own procedure but i'll be talking about the pmp procedure first you see this is a flow diagram showing what you have to do to apply for pmp exam i would say that before going to this step you must first become a pmi member to become a pmi member you must go to pmi.org first register yourself as a member that is registered member of the website that is free you can do it any time create a password put in your data picture everything that you will be able to log in to the pmi website any time but remember you have become a member of the pmi website but still you are not the member of pmi you have to pay certain fee to be a member of pmi and for that you have to click on memberships on the website and then apply online they will ask you certain number of questions a very few questions about your address and contact and all that and then they will ask you to pay for the yearly subscription that is 129 dollars is the yearly subscription for pmi membership so for the first year you will have to pay 129 plus another 10 dollars because you are doing it for the first time so 139 dollars you have to pay for the membership you do that you will have access to a lot of material on pmi website actually all the standards i have been showing you the electronic copies of all the standards are downloadable and that is not all you can download a lot of other material like previous congress proceedings various articles and lot many other things so become a member first why i am asking you to become a member because you will have to pay less for the exam the exam fee as i will tell you later is 555 dollars but if you are a pmi member you just have to pay 405 dollars that is almost equal to what you have already paid for the membership but then you get a lot of advantage of becoming a member so first become a member first register on website then become a member pay for your membership and then start the 
PMP application process. Why I am saying it? Although you can apply for PMP exam without being a member, because PMI, PMP is an international certification and PMI cannot disallow anyone who is not a PMI member to appear in the exam. Anyone from anywhere in the world can appear in the exam, but for non-members, they have increased the fee. The fee would be $555. So take advantage of this opportunity. You can become member today and later when you feel fit to start filling your application, then you can start doing this process. You can fill in the application online or offline. But I would very, very strongly recommend that you do it online. For that, naturally, you have to go to PMP, PMI website, certifications, PMP, and then apply now. When you do apply now, your application will open. And that would be a number of pages to be filled, a long application. You cannot do it in one sitting, so you keep saving it and logging out and then you can again log in anytime and start filling your application from where you had left earlier. The application will remain open for 90 days. And if you do not complete it in 90 days, the application will be closed, but it will not be lost. You can always request PMI by sending them an email to info at pmi.org that your application can be reopened and then you can start filling it from where you left. But I am sure it is not going to be what you are going to do because you will be applying very soon, not waiting for three months to apply for PMP exam. So when you start filling the application, just take two to three days, fill everything, show it to me and when I vet it, you can submit it. Once you have submitted the application, within five calendar days, PMI will get back to you. And they will tell you to, if there is any problem with your application, you have not filled it right or something, they will let you know and you can correct it. Or they will ask you to make the payment. That is $405 for members and $555 for non-members. Right. So once you have submitted the fee, PMI will start the audit process. That, that means this is an optional step. PMI chooses 10% applications at random to be audited. So there might be a chance that you are audited and if you are audited, whatever you have written in the application, you have to prove it. What PMI will do is they will send you an email and that will contain all the documents you need to get filled. It is just like getting an admission in an international university and they will send you a set of transcript forms which you have to get filled from various universities and everywhere you have studied and worked and the bosses there will sign that transcript and seal it in under their seal and sign it and give it back to you and you will then courier it to PMI. So, if you have shown you have got some education from somewhere, you have to fill in that, either produce the certificate or maybe they ask you to get a letter signed, a transcript form signed from that university. If you have got some experience in project, you have shown, you will have to go back to that person you have shown as your boss and he will have to sign and write the transcript form, seal it and give it back to you. So you will collect all these envelopes. And once all the envelopes are together in place, 
then you can put them together into a big envelope and send them by courier to PMI and you should not take a lot of time in that although PMI allows 90 days for audit but that does not mean you have to take 90 days for this auditing so before you have, uh, you have uh, submitted your application I would suggest that you get in touch with all those people you are uh, writing names as your bosses on various projects and ask them if they will be kind enough in case of audit how soon can they give you the transcript and you as soon as you get the audit you immediately go to them in one or two days get all the transcripts filled and send them back immediately to BMI it will take about five days to reach BMI so within a gap of seven days you can complete the audit process especially in this current scenario you have to be fast so if at all your audit comes it is not going to happen to you there is not must so if at all then you will have to cater for these seven days after your audit papers are received by PMI within five to seven days they will get back to you and tell you whether your audit has been accepted or not I have only heard of one single chance so far in my life where an audit was rejected and that was a lady from Iran she contacted me and she said that her audit had been rejected and once I checked her application it was so gross mistakes there in the application she was lying everywhere that she has got experience she was secretary of a person and she had no experience of project management and she was claiming that she had had project management experience and she was caught therefore her, her audit was rejected but your audit will definitely go through and once that is done you will receive a letter from PMI allowing you to appear in the exam within one year of issuance of that letter within one year and you will you will get three chances to appear in the exam in that one year you can avail one chance or two or three that depends upon you but I am sure you will pass in the very first attempt so uh, even if you intend passing in the very first attempt I would strongly suggest that you appear uh, uh, in current scenario before 15th of December in case you cannot make it no problem at all then you will prepare on 6th edition naturally in current scenario and you still will have a lot of time left to, for you and you can avail two other chances on 6th edition no problem don't really get disheartened by that that may happen and you don't really have to be disheartened but I am sure that you will pass in the very first event okay what next after that you appear in the exam there are 200 multiple choice questions and you will get four hours to appear in the exam so whatever the result is would be shown to you would be presented to you immediately after the exam and you would know that you have passed or failed in case you pass your certification cycle will start the certification cycle is good for three years when you pass the exam you are a PMP for three complete years after three years or within these three years you are supposed to fulfill certain requirements to maintain this certification and if you do not fulfill that requirement your PMP certification can be at risk what is the requirement you have to gain you have to earn 60 professional development units in these three years meaning what almost around 20 PDUs per year not a big deal 20 PDUs mean 20 hours of training on latest skills that is not a huge thing you can do a three day course every year and complete the 60 PDUs or I'll tell you so many other ways of how to gain these PDUs 
But once you complete these videos, you have to pay a fee to renew your PDUs and that is just $60 for a PMI member if you are still a member and I strongly recommend that you upkeep your membership. Every year keep paying $129 that is not much that is going to be very useful for you. So after three years pay $60 as a member or if you are not a member pay $150 your membership will be renewed. If your membership is not renewed in three years, your PMP credential will be suspended. It will not be expired. It will not be eliminated. You will not be able to write PMP with your name anymore, but you will be suspended in suspension for one year. During that one year, if you can complete your 60 PDUs and claim them and pay the fee, you will be granted back your PMP status and that will again be for next three years. And if you can't do it, only then, I mean, after fourth year, completion of fourth year, if you are still unable to complete your 60 PDUs, your credential will expire. You will no more be PMP at all. You will be, if you, you intend becoming a PMP again, you have to go through the whole process yet again. Whole process. So this is not a difficult job. If you keep doing your renewals every three years, completing your 60 PDUs every, every three years, there is no problem at all. I am keeping it since 2001. Still, I, I have never let it expire and I'll never do, get it expired. And to tell you the truth, I do not hold only one certification. I hold all the eight certifications. I pay for all the eight certifications every year. I pay for uh, the PMI membership every year. And that is really, really, really very fruitful. You must not let your membership or your credential any of your credentials expire ever. That is how the world would know that you are a current member of PMI. You are a current PMP in good standing or whatever certifications you hold. So this is how you apply. For CAPM, again the requirements are almost like same but the only difference here is that this certification there is certified associate in project management is for junior people who want to be associates of project manager. So they are granted this certification when they pass. They are granted this certification for five years. Not three, but five years. But the bad part about this certification is that it is not renewable. If you sustain it for five years, after five years, it will definitely expire. You can't renew it. Why? Because probably after five years, you will have enough experience to apply for PMP exam now. And then you must go for PMP exam. But if still you don't want to go for PMP exam and you still want to be a CAPM, then you can apply again for the CAPM exam and then gain this certification yet again for another five years. So this is the PMP and CAPM examination uh, application procedure. Uh, then we talked about uh, the renewal, the exam need, the new exam changes, role delineation study as it is said three to five years, sometimes it is said five to seven years after every five to seven years it depends upon how the market need changes if it changes earlier then it could be three to five years if uh, market need is static it could be five to seven years after every five to seven years they will conduct a third party survey yet again for that certification for that role and then the whole process will start but this all is done this is called role delineation study. 
when they review the role of a project manager for the new, for the new exam that is called role delineation study after the role delineation study the exam content outline will change and ultimately the exam will change uh, okay the eligibility requirement for pmp there are two type of people who, who can appear for pmp exam number 1 those who hold a secondary degree or a diploma but they are not graduates mind it such people i hope none of you qualify for this so such people will have to show a minimum experience of 5 years or 60 unique months which are non overlapping and that is an a 7500 hour experience per year 1500 hours are counted so 7500 hours of experience is required for a person who is not a graduate and on top of that he needs to show 35 hours of formal project management education or training so these are three requirements secondary school minimum 5 years and 35 hours of training this is one group the other group is the graduates you could be an engineer you could be a simple graduate but whatever the graduation is it should be a four year degree it should be 16 years of education only then you will be considered as a bachelor the old ba ba pass people they do not you know qualify for this because they have 14 years of experience not 16 years of experience sorry experience i'm saying education so 16 years of education or four year of professional degree that would qualify them for bachelors if you do not have that then you are qualifying only for the previous uh, secondary degree thing and you should be having five years of experience okay if you are a graduate then you need to show only three years of experience which is 36 months of unique non overlapping professional project management experience which can can be counted as 4500 hours again 1500 hours per year for 3 years it is 4500 hours and on top of that 35 hours of training so the training we are getting here right now will be counted towards your 35 contract hours but as far as your experience is concerned i am sure all of you are graduates all of you do have 3 years of experience which you can show as non overlapping 36 months why i say non overlapping you can look at the diagram shown below it clearly shows if two projects you have done are overlapping the overlap period will only be counted towards one project but not the other maybe if it is counted towards project 1 project 2 will will be considered to start after project 1 has finished so the overlap period is counted only towards one side the gap is allowed if you do, you have not done any project between two projects maybe for 2 3 months or 6 months that is all right but it is my personal opinion that the gap should not be more than 3 years because it is considered in the community of project managers that if someone has not done a project for 3 years all his previous experience is considered nullified so you should have a 3 years experience minimum but it could be spread over longer period of time do not try to show all your project if you have got 30 years of experience do not do not show the 30 years here start from the last project and keep showing your projects until and unless you can count 4500 hours of project and which is minimum of 3 years you if you are able to show 4500 hours in 2 years that is that does not fulfill the criteria you have to have 36 months unique non overlapping that is 3 years shown like that so these are the two criteria and i am sure you all are fulfilling this criteria of the four year degree that is bachelor program anyone who does not fulfill this requirement or who has any question about what i have said so far you can now speak
Yes, please. Anyone? From my yes, side, sir. it's okay. Okay. <coughs> okay, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, we'll proceed ahead. Okay. Uh, just to show you the CAPM requirement, much easier, much simpler. They have just the requirement to meet uh, of secondary diploma. They don't even have to be a graduate. And they can either have a one year experience or 1500 hours of uh, working in project team, not as a project manager, in project team, just one year. Or direct from the university, if you get a training of 23 hours in project management, you can directly sit in the exam without any experience. So there is an or between these two options, either one year experience in project or 23 hours of training. Both ways, you can go and sit in the CAPM exam and be a CAPM for next five years. So this is much more easier. Okay, as far as the examination is concerned, there are 200, 200 questions for PMP exam uh, and four hours allowed to you. Now a word of caution. Out of these 200 questions, 25 questions would be pre-test questions which will not be scored, you will be awarded marks out of 175 only. But you see, I do not agree with the with the word pre-test because these questions are not exactly pre-test. They are not shown before the actual exam. They are mixed into the actual exam. You do not know which are the pre-test questions. So, as far as you are concerned, you will be shown 200 questions, which will all look alike. You won't know which are the 25 pre-test questions and therefore you have to pass from 200 questions, not from 175 questions. So if someone tells you that you just have to, uh, you know, do 175 questions, then he is wrong. You have to do all the 200 questions in four hours and pass out of them so forget about this 25 this 25 is only meant for new questions being introduced to the exam lot so the database will get new questions and 25 new questions will be presented to every candidate and these these questions will be testing questions they will actually they, they are actually checking the difficulty level of that those questions as if they have to be retained in the in the subsequent exam or not so these questions are presented to lot many you know everybody is presented 25 questions and this, the question you are getting and someone else might be getting the same question also but if that question is proven all right then it will formally form part of the exam set an exam set is just not 175 questions. Everybody does not get the same question. They have a large pool of exam questions and you just don't know what you are going to get. So four, four hours and 200 questions. Four hour means 240 minutes. 200 questions. So you are getting only a little over a minute for each question about 72 seconds so it is it is a tough deal it is a tough deal for CAPM the questions are easier they are not really checking your experience they are not scenario based CAPM questions are fewer only 150 questions in three hours and the pre-test number number of questions is only 15 but the same rule applies which I just explained for PMP. All the questions created for PMP exam are according to the ISO standard and other global psychometric testing um, mechanisms. PMP examination content outline, that is what will test your domain, task, knowledge and skills. And you have to prepare yourself according to the exam content outline. And naturally, all of those things are covered in PMBOK, but not in as much as much detail. 
so if something you need you you see is in the exam content outline and is not well explained in PMBOK or it is even not there in PMBOK still you have to get it prepared from somewhere okay coming over to the exam content outline uh, of course you will download it but I am just showing you how does it look like so this exam content outline will uh, this is for CAPM for CAPM they have got you know 12 areas and these are the number of questions the uh, percentage of questions coming from each chapter but this is for the associate forget about it we are more concerned about the PMP exam and PMP exam we have got five domains as per the examination content outline initiating the project all the processes and all the things you do while you're initiating a project that would be 13 percent questions that means out of 200 you will get 26 questions from initiating the project from planning the project you will get 24 percent or 48 questions from executing the project you will get 31 percent or 62 questions from monitoring and control you will get 25 percent or 50 questions and from closing the project 7 percent are 14 questions so this is the total number of questions you will be getting in your exam as I said initiating the project 13 percent questions so how many questions 26 so these are the eight tasks a project manager needs to know and have experience in while initiating a project so if there are 26 questions almost three to four questions per task would be there so isn't it important for you to prepare each and every task thoroughly look at these tasks they are very important each and every word written in these tasks you must understand very carefully you must you might have experience in some of these things you might have been doing a lot many things as they are written here but there are a lot many other things which you have never seen which you have never experienced and for the purposes of exam you need to learn those areas and be proficient in attempting questions based on those task one I'll read it for you it says perform project assessment so a question rises in your mind what is a project assessment have I ever done project assessment how do we do project assessment what is it so if you don't know about it you need to read it from somewhere naturally some of it will be talked about in PMBOK as well but not in that much detail so if at all you have never done project assessment you might have to learn it from elsewhere as well it says project perform project assessment based upon available information lessons learned from previous projects and meetings with relevant stakeholders now just look at these three things what is an available information so this is the information from the surrounding of the project then the lessons learned from previous project that means you have to consult the historical data from the previous projects as well do we do that if we don't do that then probably that is something which needs to be done and then it says meetings with relevant stakeholders that is the stakeholders are also important for the project assessment and we have to go and find them and not only find them but we have to communicate with them we have to conduct a number of meetings with them why in order to support the evaluation of the feasibility of the new product or services within the given assumptions and our constraints but what 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 is the purpose evaluating the feasibility of the of the product feasibility have you ever done feasibility study what does it say whether it is feasible it is viable to do this project 
the thing, the product or service we are trying to create, is it viable? Should we do it? So if you have never done it, you must do it. And if you have already done it, then you have to refresh your knowledge and maybe align it with PMBOK. And also it says remaining within the given assumptions and our constraints. So what are the assumptions and the constraints defined before this, vibe, uh, this feasibility is conducted? So you see, this is just not one task. It, you might get a question about project assessment. You might get a question about, you know, uh, 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 meetings with the relevant stakeholders or using lessons learned of previous projects or what is the in available information, something about that, uh, uh, something about the evaluation of the feasibility, something about the assumptions or constraints. So there are at least five or six different points which can be converted into questions here. So getting a three to four question out of this is not impossible. Similarly, task two, identify key deliverables. So we are concerned about deliverables. We need to identify the deliverable before we can initiate the project. Then on the business requirements, what are the business requirements? We need to understand what is the business need? How do we create a business case? What are the business requirements? So identify the key deliverables based on the business requirements in order to manage customer expectations. Manage customer expectation is another major item to be questioned. And direct the achievement of project goals. What are we talking about here? Direct the achievement of project goals. So there are some kind of project goals and we are trying to direct them into the direction where the customer expectations are met and the deliverable is delivered according to the business requirements. You see, out of this just simple small sentence, you will get three to four questions. And you can read through each and every one part of one of these tasks and there is a huge, you know, knowledge base behind it, which you need to consult, which you need to prepare, which you need to conceptualize. And on top of these eight tasks for initiating the project, you might even get some questions on the knowledge and skills listed below. Like, do you know what are the analytical skills? What is benefit analysis technique? What are the elements of a project charter? What are the estimation tools and techniques? What is strategic management? So you need to know all these things. You see, uh, do not be afraid of these terms and everything. We will go through, <coughs> go through everything during this course. I'll, I'll you know, uh, make you very comfortable with all these terminologies and concepts. But still, if you feel that there is something which you need to further understand, you can read it from other sources or you can collect your questions and refer back to me. We can sit down again and I can explain those items which could not be described in this course. This was as much as the initiation goes. Then is the planning. Again, a number of tasks. You can see only 10 here, but that's not all. Look at the next page. There are 13 tasks in planning, 24% questions, meaning 48 questions out of 13 tasks, almost four questions per part. So read out these tasks, rather I would say pin the task, these, all these tasks uh, on your wall and just keep taking them. You understood, you have understood task number one, task number two. If, as you uh, keep checking this checklist, you keep preparing further. And on top of these 13 tasks in planning, you need to have certain knowledge and skills and there's a long list. You need to understand change management planning. You need to understand cost management planning, communication planning. You need to understand the contract types and selection criteria, estimation tools and techniques. There might be certain tools or certain skills as knowledge which are already covered in initiation. But here you again will find their names like estimation tools and techniques, human resource planning, lean and efficiency principles and so on and so forth. 
you see there is a long list you, you should not be, you should not find any one of the terms given in this examination content outline to be strange resolve the strangeness understand each and everything and only then sit in the exam in execution we have got seven tasks and a number of knowledge and skills again and knowledge and skills are continuous improvement processes contract management techniques elements of statement of work and so on and so forth in monitoring and control again seven tasks and here we have got earned value cpm per trend analysis lean kanban six sigma and so on and so forth there are a lot many things here you must understand each and every one of those in closing again we have seven tasks and a number of knowledge and skills and to top everything up in addition to these five domains from all of these domains there is there are certain cross cutting knowledge areas which you also need to know what is active listening what are applicable laws and regulations what do you mean by benefit realization what are brainstorming techniques and there are, there's a long list when you are comfortable with all of these things then you are prepared to go and sit for pmp exam okay so good so far ji please speak up ji it's going very fine very understandable and it's fun okay wonderful wonderful right so let us move on to the scheduling part ji wasif aap kya kehna cha rahe hain please wasif aapki awaaz abhi tak nahi suni aap sunaye aap awaaz was if you need to unmute yourself from your side your mic is not on that's why we can't listen to you and if you have some problem in getting the mic up at least write it down in your chat what do you want to say ji wasif no you, we can't get you we can't read you we can't listen to you ah yes we can we can at least scoring yeah please write down your query write down your query and i'll respond to that meanwhile anyone else uh, any comments while wasif wasif is writing his query uh, we can talk mohammad ali uh, you are here uh, yes sir ye <laughs> mohammad ali is a is a is our old student he is very intelligent and he is just preparing to go for the exam very soon very very soon uh, when are you planning mohammad ali sir inshallah the this uh, in november in november hey don't go for over okay the number is over okay wasif uh, okay you said it is based on the level of difficulty uh, okay level of difficulty for the exam you you mean uh, i am not really getting your question wasif but uh, what i understand is that level of difficulty of the exam or the exam content outline it, it may look difficult because many of things you might not have seen before but when you go through it when you study it with me uh, i'll make everything easier for you to understand and then you can question me anything and everything we will understand everything very very closely and uh, even if you want to 
have consultation with me one to one we can do that as well but if you want to explain your question i i'll be grateful And one other thing, Vasip, what you can do is, if you are uh, feeling even uh, difficulty in this, uh, you can write me a detailed email, and I can respond to respond to you, and all others also. I'll include everybody else in that uh, reply, and they would also learn everything. Sc uh, you say, is the score based on level of difficulty of question? Uh, not at all. Not at all. Every question is e of equal mark. Right. Every question is of equal mark, so uh, you don't have to be bothered about that. The difficult questions will car carry more marks or what. So there is no problem. Any one of you, if you want to ask anything in detail, write me an email and uh, I will uh, respond to you. And I can, you know, send a copy to everybody else also, as if they can also be clarified on that specific doubt. So with this, uh, I move on to the PMP examination scheduling. Okay, as I have already told you, the exam fee for PMP exam for a member is $405. And for a non-member is $555. As for, this is for the computer-based testing. And what is our computer-based testing? This is normally uh, conducted in internationally in prometric testing centers. Sylvan prometric testing centers. You might learn about them if you have not known them earlier. They are uh, located almost everywhere in the world. Even in Pakistan, we have got one in Islamabad, one in Karachi, and one in Lahore. So uh, you can locate it from their website, and you can always go and sit in the exam there. Uh, only computer-based testing is allowed where computer-based testing is available. Paper-based testing is only meant for those countries or those places where is there is no possibility of computer based testing like uh, you know i know of a few countries like iran iraq afghanistan probably if they allow the paper based testing only that can be held computer based testing is not for them uh, even i uh, i i have tried my level best for in the previous year to uh, get computer based testing in iran but it was not possible then we tried for the paper based testing and then due to sanctions, uh, they are not even taking the paper-based testing from Iranians. So what Iranians have to do, or Afghanis, or Iraqis, they have to do is they have to go out of the country to another country wherever this exam is conducted and sit in the exam there. Now, about the re-examination, unfortunately, if you fail the exam for the, in your first attempt or your second attempt, the fee for a member is $275 to reappear in the exam. The fee for a non-member is $375. And again, paper-based testing is not for us. For renewal of your certification, members pay $60 every three years and non-members pay $150 every three years. Uh, CAPM, if you are interested, uh, for members it is $225, for non-members it is $300, and re-examination, if you fail, is $150 for members and $200 for non-members. And there is no upkeep of this certification. Okay. Uh, you can note down the Prometric website uh, address from this page. This is, uh, you can go on this uh, on this page and this is where you have to book your exam. But you see, because you do not have a password and eligibility ID that only is allocated to you when PMI allows you to sit in the exam and you provide that eligibility as a login and your password to enter into this site and then you can book your exam. So, you will get a letter for eligibility period of one year. You may take the exam three times in that period. 
if you do not pass in your first attempt <coughs> and when you go for the examination i mean when you receive this letter they will provide you a pmi eligibility id they will provide you a start date of the eligibility period eligibility period and the end date of the eligibility period <coughs> and you will be provided some examination scheduling instructions on how to book your exam but whatever those instructions are they will be guiding you to go to this website now some precautions for that <coughs> you should try to book your exam 6 weeks before the date of your exam so today you must fix what is the date of your exam for example if it is 16th of december then you should book your exam latest by 1st of november right you must book your exam by 1st of november the latest do it even earlier so your application process must have concluded before that so you have to act very fast you don't have a lot of time to waste immediately even today start your process go get your membership go start you know filling your application in next 2 3 days complete your application you see what i can do is to help you you need to show 35 contact hours i will give, give you an advance certificate for that as if you can apply today or tomorrow you submit your application or maybe you take a couple of days 3 4 days not more than that in 3 4 days your application must be submitted membership you should do today or even tomorrow pay for membership today or tomorrow in next 2 3 4 days you apply for your submit your application for pmp exam and then wait for what happens while we study while you prepare the month we are spending in this process would be passed and by that time your application will be approved even if you get an audit that can be fixed within this one one month and ultimately you by 1st november you will be able to book your exam i hope you understand there there is no problem if you try to book your exam 6 weeks earlier another caution if your eligibility period is about to end which is not the case with you because you are going to get your eligibility by 1st of november and therefore it would be something like you know one complete year so this does not really apply to you but if you are you did not apply in your uh, set in your exam and it comes to be november of 2018 and you want to appear in november of 2018 then probably you have to book your exam 3 months earlier than that so in in by the end of august 2018 you must book your exam because if somehow you could not appear by the end date your money will be lost right now the refund policy number 1 number 1 is a 30 day policy 30 day policy is if you book your exam on a specific date say you book your exam 1st of november you will have 30 days to make up your mind to change the date of the exam if in these 30 days you do change the exam sorry uh right the day you try to change the exam there must be 30 days left before the exam so if you are trying for 16th of december then 15th of november is the last date when you decide to change the exam date maybe you say i cannot appear on 16th i want to appear on 18th or 20th then in that case you must do that before mid uh, before uh, mid of november 
So by mid of November, you must have decided by 15th of November, you must have decided that I want to change the date. If you don't do that within that period, you will have to pay for it. A $70 for changing the exam. So if you do it within 30 days before the exam, not within 30 days before the exam, then it is free. If you enter into these 30 days, say you, you apply on 16th November or 18th or 20th November or whatever, later than that, then you will have to pay $70. So one month earlier free, during the last month $70, but the last two days of the exam, you even don't have to pay $70. You have to have uh, you have to pay the full fee again you cannot change in other words you cannot change your exam when two days are left right this is the the rescheduling policy now what about the emergencies which could occur and you may not be able to reach the exam center in time last moment emergencies so if that happens and you can't reach the exam due to actuating circumstances then you must contact PMI by calling their customer support number or sending them email but don't send them email because that you might not you know you may waste your time and they may not get your email in time or whatever so call them Call them and tell them 72 hours before, uh, within 72 hours of the time of exam that this is the reason why you could not appear in the exam. And those reasons which they accommodate could be a medical emergency. You yourself met an accident or something. There, you being a military officer have been sent on a deployment due to some emergency in the country. There is a death in immediate family, there is an illness in immediate family or some natural disaster like earthquake or tsunami or whatever due to which you could not reach the exam. Only these five circumstances, they will accommodate you and give you another date. Otherwise, your whole fee, exam fee will be forfeited and you have to apply afresh. So this is far as far as the emergencies are concerned. Now, once you go to the exam center, uh, you have to carry at least three different ID identifications. And it is preferable that you should carry a photo ID. At least one identification must carry a photo ID. What identifications are uh, they can accommodate, they can accept in the exam center? Your driver license, if you are a soldier, then your military ID, current military ID, driver license should also be not expired, passport not expired, current passport, national ID card, current valid ID card. These are the four basic identifications, but you can also present your, you know, uh, some other identifications as secondary identification. They will accommodate that as well. That is your valid employee ID, your the, the card you, you hang around your neck from your company, that can also be used. Maybe it is a photo ID, it also has expiry date or something. If that is not possible or the, you need other IDs, then your credit cards and debit cards, the valid visa and MasterCard, etc., etc., they will also be treated as valid IDs. You cannot present social security card, which is not there in Pakistan, and library cards as the ID. So you must carry more than two IDs or three IDs with you to, for the, to the exam center. And only then you will be allowed to sit in the exam. Uh, you will not be allowed a calculator. You will be allowed to use the computer-based uh, calculator, whatever the uh, uh, online calculator kind of a thing. You will be given... A set of pencils and some scrap papers and you can you know 
write down during your exam whatever calculations you need to do and there will be a set of instructions provided to you by the examination staff which you can follow uh, the three year ccr cycle uh, that three year ccr cycle starts as i said before after your pmp you have uh, you know three years of pmp certification has been completed you have shown 60 pdus you have paid 60 dollars for the renewal and your next three year cycle starts but if you are in a suspension period you did not have all the 60 pdus and you had to gain it in the fourth year you will not be able to write pmp with your name but whenever you could complete those 60 pdus you will be granted back your pmp status but your date will not start from the date when you apply it will start from the date when the last cycle had ended so that will start from the same date it's it ended and your new ccr will be counted your suspension period will be counted towards your first year uh, how many pdus can be carried forward first of all for different certifications there are different requirements for the number of pdus to be achieved for pmp for program management for portfolio management for business analysis these are the four certifications each one require 60 pdus so i have all the certifications i need to have 60 pdus for pmp pgmp pfmp and pba i need to have 30 pdus for sp scheduling professional risk management professional and agile certified professional and for capm naturally it we do i do not need because it is not renewable but how many of these pdus you have gained and claimed maybe you you gain more than required so what will happen to the extra pdus you get how many of them can it, can be carried forward to the next cycle so as far as a pmp pgmp pfmp and business analysis is concerned pba you will be allowed to carry forward 20 pdus each but for rmp sp and acp you will be allowed to carry forward only 10 pdus but they are conditional if you gain all the pdus in the very first years of ccr cycle then you know no carry forward is possible the carry forward the, the number of pdus you want to carry forward should have been gained in the very last year of your ccr cycle meaning what when i was doing my pmp when i did my pmp in the very first year i received about uh, what can you say more than 200 300 pdus i did a lot many activities and i had hundreds of pdus in first year for example i did, I, I do not get any more pdu in second and third year then my only 60 pdus will be counted towards my certification cycle after 3 years and remaining 340 pdus 240 pdus will go waste none of them will be carried forward if i wanted them to be carried forward then those 20 pdus i want to carry forward must have been achieved in the last year so if i achieve 50 pdus in last year only 20 will be carried forward the first year and second year pdus are not carried forward only third year pdus are carried forward and the maximum amount is 20 pdus for pmp okay i think uh, as far as the uh, uh, discussion on pdus are concerned but how do you get these pdus and uh, how many pdus you can get from where i think i should pen this discussion for tomorrow and then we can talk about these things in detail and then we can start off with the main course of the study so this is what i had to say for today so if you have any comments any discussions to be carried out right now you can do it here or you may leave me some message or something and we can continue so any questions you are open to the discussion
Yes, please. I'm okay with it so far. It was wonderful. Wonderful. Shahid? Uh, yes, sir. I have a uh, few queries. Uh, so far, the session, can you hear me? Yeah, of course. Okay. Uh, so far, the session code uh, you have uh, uh, explained in detail about the core foundation and the fundamentals of uh, the PMI and the all courses. I am also the member at PMI since last two three years. I have the PIMBO five uh, with me, mm. but I just want to know that what about the content or the media or the presentation you will be sharing with, uh, with us? Of course. Also. Also, uh, do we have to refer some other books like uh, Edwill or Rita or yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. What kind of strategy do we have to follow in these uh, the next one month so that you know we can? I mean, do we have to scam the pin book uh, in detail or what strategy you will advise us to do so that you know the only objective is to uh, clear exam. Okay. Also about the practice exams or any kind of uh, software uh, for exams. Okay. Uh, th these are the general queries. I mean, uh, which we I, have not discussed in. I understand. You see, for the uh, for the course of the study, for the time we are studying together, I will ask you only to refer to PMB, okay, and listen to me. I'll share all the presentations, and we will discuss everything in detail. We will clarify all the doubts. Do not read, 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 read Rita or anything else, except when you feel it is necessary. I don't stop you. You can read any book, but only when you have a query which I cannot satisfy, then you go further. Why I'm saying that? Because if you start referring to a lot many things right now, you might get confused. So, okay, what I can allow you is. The matter which we have studied all, already so far, whatever we have studied so far, you can refer whatever book you want to refer. But I will be providing you a link in which there will be all slides, there will be a lot many books, Rita book and this book or that book, every book is there and in electronic format. And there are a lot many hundreds and thousands of questions there. So you will get ample material from me. And on top of that, if you want to study from elsewhere, no problem at all. But the main objective is that you should not leave any stone unturned. All the queries you may have must have been answered and all the concepts must be well founded. You ask me questions, you do uh, your own study, whatever. But I will be sharing the links and if at all possible, I can do it right away. Let me let me see if it is available right here. I have put it on OneDrive and I can give you a link to the OneDrive. Uh, I think it will take time. Uh, I'll, I'll do that tomorrow. Or I can email you guys uh, that link. So any other question? Yes, wonderful. Thank you, sir. Most welcome. Most welcome. Okay, thank you very much. And I expect to see you again tomorrow at 11 p.m. my time, Pakistan time. And inshallah, we'll be enjoying this session even better. Thank you very much. And take thank care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.